Hello, everybody. I have such a special episode today with Elizabeth. You guys might recognize her from the very, very special birthday video we did a couple of weeks ago for the big guy for Mr. T. And I, as I've said before, I had the pleasure and the honor of editing that video. So I, all of a sudden, I was had my cell phone and I started getting all these videos sent to me over WhatsApp. And so when I got Elizabeth's, I, I'm not a TikToker. I'm, I'm old. <laughs> I'm not on TikTok. So I messaged her to ask her for her platform. And she said, Oh, I'm on TikTok. And you guys, her TikToks are unbelievable. And I'm so <laughs> happy to have her on the channel today. She's also been on our dear friend, Charlie Ward's channel. I will place that link down in the description box below for you guys as well. She's got her awesome son with her today, which is amazing. We love having <laughs> kids and animals with us. So <laughs> most of my viewers are also parents, so they'll understand. So I'm gonna let you introduce yourself first, Elizabeth, whatever you wanna tell my audience, and then we'll get into your story. Um, hi, <laughs> I, I'm Elizabeth. Um, I am from uh, Tennessee, um, so not too far from Bryce. Um, and uh, I have officially, I'd say, been a part of the truth movement for, well, I mean, about five months now. Um, I, you know, obviously I started watching Charlie Ward's videos back in like March of 2020 and felt like I needed to do something, do my part. So uh, I had a TikTok account already um, and had a pretty small following for TikTok. TikTok's kind of a weird, a weird animal in that kind of case. But um, I had kind of a small following on there. So I was like, well, I can just start posting some truth <laughs> um, and just at least reaching those people and hopefully more. So I've just kind of been in the fight uh, to you know, just help wake people up and help, you know, uncover the truth um, for just a few months now, but it's going well, I'd say, <laughs> as best as it can go, I'd say, with the internet. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been an incredible journey, and it's uh, uncovered a lot of things that I didn't even know about myself, and kind of almost been a healing journey for me as well. So um, yeah. I'm the same way. My channel is I, I research stuff. I just, I've always been interested in really fringe topics and being forced yeah. to research stuff to do a, to do a report on it. Basically you start uncovering yeah. stuff that you're like, Holy crap. I didn't even know this, you know, and you start yeah. the rabbit hole gets even deeper than you thought it was originally. So what woke you up? What was that moment where you were <laughs> red pilled as they say? Uh, I actually feel like I've probably been in this a lot longer than most people my age. Um, so I would say I was red pilled by in a real, like a spiritual religious kind of way first. Mm -hmm. Um, because I'd say back, I, well, back in 2013, I lived in LA. Um, I went to film school for, um, for a year um, and, uh, lived there and did whole, that whole thing. Um, but I kind of got introduced to a very different um, view of biblical teachings and such, I guess you would say, in spiritual, um, just like very, we would call it like kingdom mindedness um, instead of victimhood that the church has been teaching for years and years. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like that was kind of my first uh, initiation <laughs> to Red Pill <laughs> land. Um, <laughs> and I uh, started to believe these things and kind of like really look into the Bible. And I used to listen to this teacher, which I still do to this day because he's amazing. Um, his name is Ian Clayton. And um, I just kind of like was absorbing everything that he was talking about because it just resonated as truth to me and it just made sense. Um, and so I, um, I kind of went on that journey first and that was a hard one just because, especially in the religious world, everything is very cut and dry. It's like, you know, you can't believe in this because the occult world or the new age has taken it. So you can't do that. And it's like, but that was ours first. Like, what? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> 
That's so oh. funny you bring that up because somebody actually was asking me that earlier today on my community board. And um, I'm just like you. I grew up, pres- I mean, I grew up Presbyterian. I lived in LA for a while as well. I'm a good bit older than you though. And, <laughs> um, but I've always been very open-minded. Yeah. And so I never was fearful of like astrology or all this kind of stuff. Yeah. I never, you know, in my mind, God, ha- there's no, you can't put limits on God. Right. You know, you right. can't limit yeah. it. God is all powerful. And I actually discovered in one of my stories I was researching that the Hess Act was an act that happened during World War II in Germany. And we know that the uh, big in the party, I don't know if I can say that word, in AZI <laughs> party, they were really into the occult. All occult means is hidden knowledge. That's all it right. means. Um, yeah. And they were using it, but then something happened with one of his people, Hess, who kind of betrayed him. And so he, uh, Hitler made this um, deal with the Pope where they would start this narrative that all this stuff was satanic and bad. Yeah. It was to dumb us down. It was right. literally, and so I tell people when they, they come at me with these things that these practices are demonic, and I'm like, well, who told you that? Yeah. You understand that that's, you know, right. it's, it's not, you know, just because a man, a mere mortal told you that doesn't mean it's true. Right. Um, and we get a lot of backlash because a lot of people are awake enough to know that there's infiltration in our world, everywhere in our world, but they can't accept that it's right in the church. Right. Like, uh, I mean, I even got to the point where at one point I was just uh, so annoyed and you kind of get to this like annoyed stage where you're just mm-hmm. like, well, what is true? Yeah. And I just, I just, I was like, I don't even want to read my Bible because nothing's true. It's been <laughs> altered. It, like, it's been so altered. Yeah. Like, people. Yep. Girl, we're on the same page. I do on Wednesdays. I've been reading through the banned books of the Bible, the heretical yeah. books. We're I, I was just starting to li- watch your series on the ju- books of Jubilee because that's been yeah. something I've been really interested in lately. And I didn't know, I, I oh. didn't really know where to get it. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I started listening. I started watching your series and it's really, well, really good. <laughs> we, we do it on the Dark Outpost on Tuesdays where David Dubuque and I have a conversation, but then I follow up on Wednesdays and it's just, it's unbelievable what they've cut out and people, you know, they believe the church, these books are, are heresy, but I'm like, you know, that in the fourth century, they had a council where they edited the Bible. It says it in the, they edited it. They altered the stories. And right. Constantine the Great was not a Christian. The church will tell you he was this great Christian. No, he wasn't. No. He, he wanted his own new world order. He conquered all the Roman Empire. Everything about him was Mithraic, was Canaanite. These are the yeah. same people we're dealing with today, the Canaanites. Yeah. Jesus yeah. talked about reincarnation. Jesus talked about reading the star, all this stuff. And yeah. they want us to be vulnerable and weak and be victims as you like always right. constantly having to go to somebody to help when your relationship was, is with God, period, right. period. Yeah. I know. think that's something that I am really appreciative that I kind of like innately like grew up with mm-hmm. um, because we were always kind of the black sheep of our family. I would say just on the spiritual side of things um, because we were much more like charismatic um, and, you know, back in <laughs> that day, it was called, you know, prophecy and like the prophetic and whatnot. Yeah. And I was like, and then other people now it's like, oh, you're psychic. I'm like, well, <laughs> I mean, it's somewhere in between that, I guess. <laughs> Tomatoes, tomatoes. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, it was just kind of like it, once my eyes started to get more opened, it was very much a, oh, like I can actually like let this out of me. Like I know things innately that people don't know already. <laughs> like people just don't think about or just don't, you know, have the realization. It's like, I, you know, like we'll just know stuff innately or I'll just have a feeling towards something. And that's the, the direction I go in. And especially in the last, I'd say in the last like four years, it's very much like this very, this journey of me just trusting myself good and trusting those things yes. because let me tell you when I was four or five years old um I remember vividly walking by the tv and looking and seeing the apprentice show on and something inside of me just told me that man's gonna be really important one day <laughs> like I had that thought as like a four or five year old and I just kind of brushed it away and then when I heard that he was running for you know president um I was like what like I kind of thought it was a joke because I didn't really I wasn't into politics at all um and then I just had this like 
remembrance of that time. It was like, I just went back to it straight away. And then I was like, oh crap, like <laughs> he, maybe he is going to be important. Yeah. And so I had this like deep responsibility that I felt to, you know, vote and all that kind of stuff. But it was just like, even just going back to times like that, like I knew this was going to happen. I knew that this was important. Like I, I should trust myself <laughs> even more now, you know, Yeah. because that's inside of me, you know? Well, that's, um, so they, they want to take that away from us. Like they don't right, want exactly. us to trust our gut and our, that gut feeling is God literally talking to you. Right. You no. Know? And, and, um, my friend Tamara down in Australia, she's awesome. She does readings and she has a great saying. People ask her like, well, what's the difference between a gut feeling and fear? And she yeah. said, that's simple. Fear makes sense. Mm -hmm. Fear makes sense. Your yeah. gut feeling doesn't always make sense. That's, that's so true. That's like perfect. I know. Wow. And, and, and I think people, they, they try to like really cut us off from that source, from right. that God source. I saw you, you had a great TikTok about space, about oh, yeah. how, <laughs> what is yeah. space? Like you don't even really know. And that, right. that's something Tom Numbers and I have talked, talked about because- I are, love Tom. He's such a little, he's a teddy bear. Like I just want to <laughs> yeah. be his best friend. <laughs> so I'll have to like get you. I watch you guys. We'll have to do a, a round table with you as well. Get you in with him too. You should, oh, that'd be great because you should also tell him that I was inspired and I looked up what my, the numbers of my name. And of course it's 88 and I'm like, 88. Oh, That's that amazing. So much. Well, I will, I will message him after we get off and we'll schedule something because he has turned yeah. out to be such a good friend. And I feel like a lot of us in this movement, I mean, you and I live close to, to each other. Yeah. For those who are not from America, Georgia and Tennessee are connecting states. But um, a lot of us are all over the world. And I feel yeah. like it's been so easy to connect with people. It's like we came here and agreed to do this. Right, right. You know? For sure. Because yeah. this is, it's not easy. I'm sure. Have you experienced yeah. backlash? Have you experienced? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, I called TikTok the wild, wild west of the internet because the way the algorithm works and how your videos get seen is your video is put out to a small group of people that have searched on their phones. So it's tracking everything you do on your phone, searched on their phones, related information of what you're talking about or what's in the video. So it shows it to those group of people first. And then if it does well um, on TikTok, sharing is like, is like a like, it's like you want people to share it. Um, and um so if it does well, then it gets sent to a broader group and a broader group and a broader group. So sometimes you'll have videos go viral that are super old and, right. and people will be like, what? This is old information, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, it's because I posted it like five weeks ago. That's why. <laughs> but I, I uh, have ended up on what we call the wrong side of TikTok many times where the amount of people telling you you're crazy, like, you know, you just, I, I, told people that I would not be looking at the comments anymore. If they had a question, they can message me directly because that's just insanity. You can only hear someone call you crazy so many times yeah. or, you know, before it starts to get to you. And I did have a point of where I deleted it for a second and then it takes 48 hours to delete it. <laughs> so yeah. I got back on it. I, I like was like, okay, you know, moment of lapse of judgment kind of thing. <laughs> well, um, uh, no, I, I'm fine. <laughs> Yeah. And I don't think people who don't have a platform realize like how that does yeah. affect you. It really it does. does. I mean, I feel like that's, I definitely don't, I, I made the decision to not respond to any of any negative comments. And if they're really bad, I delete them mm -hmm. and block the person. Cause I'm just like, you know what, this wasn't for you. You know what, right. you're just, you're not helping anything. Right. And I don't want your comment to bring anybody else down either. Right. For thinking the same way. Um, so I got to a point where I just, you know, <laughs> yeah. I just ignore it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, but, I um, hear you. Yeah. I, um, you you can. <laughs> yeah, before I started doing my YouTube channel, I, I am an authorized Ashtanga teacher. I'm the only female in the state of Georgia to have this authorization. I've spent a long time in India getting it. And then once they forced us basically into house arrest, Right. Um, my, my business went under because it was a new studio. Yeah. She could, it, it was understandable. A lot of people and my boyfriend has his, our yoga school that he's still, it's still fine. But mm -hmm. I basically sat home and I was doing like ghost stories and kind of stuff like that. And I was like, so fed up with what was happening that I just started speaking the truth. And I had yeah. someone contact me and 
I can't say the T word, but T H, you know, yeah, the, 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 the word. Uh, yeah. <laughs> actually, I'll just say it and I'll blob it out and put it that they yeah. were going to um, contact my superior over in India to tell them that I supported Mr. T to have my authorization revoked. Oh my gosh. Which is exactly the same. It's what they did in Germany during World War II. Wow. You know, it, it, they, they would, you know, and that's, and I, I don't think that's what these deranged people understand is they're actually following the same playbook as the good German. They're right. doing the exact same things. Right. They're not the party yeah. of tolerance. They're not the party of, no. of I feel like on our side, we're kind of like live and let live. Like, you know, we know yeah. the horrors. We know the right. horrors that go on in this world. And as long as you're not doing what they're doing, you do you, boo. You know, right? Like, you're right. Not, but, you know, I'm like you'll you'll find your way. Yeah, <laughs> you're fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I understand that. And people, I don't think people really get. I know Mel Kay's spoken about this, and I think Charlie's mm -hmm. spoken about it. Like it does get to you over time. Yeah. And I appreciate yeah. people who leave kind comments because yeah. that means a lot to us when people actually will comment and support us. And that really, right. I know people on my channel watching right now, like that means the world to us when y'all say something kind and supportive, yeah. because on the backside, we're getting a lot of heat for it. Have yeah. you, have yeah, you exactly. lost friends or anything like in your real life? Have you? Um, no. <laughs> so <laughs> After I had my son, um, you know, kind of friendships just kind of start to slightly disappear anyways, um, just because of the nature of all in motherhood, um, yeah, motherhood. <laughs> and yeah. I also have, you know, like, I do like three part time jobs. And, you know, I just I'm, I'm busy. <laughs> in a yeah. sense. Um, but so I mean, it's kind of, that was really what started or just made me mad enough to put my thoughts and opinions out there about things was because I was so disappointed in my generation or my age group, whatever you want to call it. Um, literally just so disappointed. <laughs> like, I was like, how in the world can you guys just go about your day? Like they just, the thing is, it's the like cognitive dissonance of it just doesn't affect them right. unless it's like directly affecting them. Right. They don't care. They just don't care. And that just saddened me so deeply. I just felt this like rise in me to be like, I'm not going to be like that. That's mm -hmm. not going to be me. Um, and so I, you know, wanted to do something, but I actually, I mean, I haven't lost any friends from it. Most of my friends don't know that I do anything like this. They have no idea. <laughs> I actually had a friend from California, um, that found one of my TikToks that ended up like going viral and um and was like I had no idea like you knew anything about this like I had no idea you were like this and I was like yeah <laughs> there's a lot more to me than meets the eye <laughs> and that's been kind of like the common thing is no one expects anything like this from me because I keep everything to myself for the most part unless they inquire because I just I don't feel like <laughs> You know, it's kind of like the whole, like the Bible verse of like, don't cast your pearls before swine. It's like, these things are things that I've researched and thought about and had time with, you know, God talking about and like, this yes. is the re direction I'm going in and I'm not just going to tell anyone. <laughs> like, right. I just, I feel like it's precious and uh, it deserves to be for the people that it's for, you know? Um, and you don't need, you don't need anybody's permission as well. I feel right, like sometimes exactly. people feel like we need they are permission to put our, and it's like, how dare you actually speak your mind? It's like, you realize our constitution actually gives right. us that <laughs> right. right We're just like, how dare you believe something that's not mainstream? It's that, Cause that's very much like my age group right now. We're like, I mean, I'm 27. I just turned 27 in March and all like everybody's like out of college and kind of like entering the work world and figuring out what they want to do with their life. And they're just being sheep. And it's yeah. just so disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> like I have always vibed more with people that were older than me. Always. Like I, uh, I've always been friends with people at least 10 to 20 years older than me. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just for the fact of that, you know, I just don't feel as connected to my generation as most uh, well, of my I'm friends and stuff do. I'm 11 years older than you. And I have said for a long time that I feel like my generation was the last generation to have some sort of freedom because when I was no, in school, no, 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 the internet no, existed, no, no, but it wasn't no, no, used. No, no, no. 
Like yeah. we still had to go to the library, look up books. And so there was an element of like the wild west of encyclopedias and digging for information. Yeah. Whereas now everything's so focused on this one platform that they can very easily manipulate and control. And yeah. I remember when uh, Mr. T started talking about the, uh, you know, fake news or whatever, and thinking that's interesting. Like when he would start talking about that, cause it never even really occurred to me. I just thought, well, maybe mm -hmm. they're like exaggerating some stories because they're get, trying to get viewers. But now it's like, holy crap, everything, yeah. every single thing, <laughs> everything isn't true. And so yeah. I saw the greatest, I think, um, uh, Don T Jr. shared this and people like, I, you know, trust the science. And they're like, no, bitch, you trust your TV. Yeah, you know? right, like, right, exactly. Like, There's no science in it. If you actually did look up the science. Right. We actually but, look on, we at this stuff and nobody else is and if they did if more people did they would be able to see that there's not consistency with what yeah. they're saying you well know? i feel like that's part of the psychological operation is that they distract us mm -hmm. so heavily that we don't feel like we have time to look into anything because i know that i even like start to fall into that mindset of sometimes you know i like you know we'll scroll through tiktok and everything just to kind of get an idea of where things are in the world in the sense because it gives you such a broad range of people um and but sometimes i just have to not do that because i feel like there's so many opinions and so many thoughts that come from watching just 60 second videos every for like an hour it's, right it's you know it's a lot it of feels overwhelming it's like overwhelms like um whatever you call it stimulation yeah <laughs> whatever um it's like super overwhelming and i feel like that is part of the the psyop is that you know they just pump things in front of us all the time and always doing always moving they never have a moment to just be with yourself and be with your own thoughts mm -hmm. and i mean i i went through a phase about three years ago where i just when i would drive in the car silence mm -hmm. you know i just never listened to music i never listened to anything i just like let myself be alone with myself <laughs> yeah. and it was honestly the best thing i could have ever done <laughs> because it's a form it's a form of like, meditation yeah 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 and it's like i don't know anybody especially my age that does that i mean older too but especially in my age group like my friends would never do that like they're always listening to music always watching a video like just constant i'm just like do you ever like stop to think about what you're thinking? <laughs> Our, your own sovereignty, Super your own, <laughs> yeah, your your own autonomy. Like you right. are allowed, and that's one thing I've noticed as well with this like cancel culture that's out there. It's okay. like, you know, like I said, I feel like my generation was the last generation to have some normalcy, even though we know that this has been infiltration for a while. But like when I was growing up you were allowed to have different opinions as your friends and it was okay. You could make yeah. fun of each other and agree to disagree. I right. had two Republican aunts who married a dem each, their husbands were Democrats and their marriage mm -hmm. lasted until yeah. death did them part. And it was, yeah. it was just a joke In election season. It was always a joke. Like, do we even go vote? Cause we're just going to, you know, cancel yeah. each other out, you know, and, and they had happy, healthy marriages. And now it's like such an extreme, like black and white thinking. Yeah. And it's almost it you just you see the derangement like oozing off of people and it's it's crazy. It's, yeah, it it's absolutely like what it's like we're we're I, I mean I believe and I, and I, you probably I believe we're we're heading towards like the um the brink of combustion. Mhm. Mm and yeah. I think that it's kind of a control. It's going to hit the fan. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Well, oh, I saw somebody, somebody posted, uh, shit's about to get real for the normies. You know? Yeah, <laughs> you seriously. Um, I mean, I, I've been really like back and forth with like how that would exactly happen because I mean, I think the good of all people is in mind mm -hmm. um, with the good side. I don't know, whatever you want to call them. Um, but and so I feel like anything too drastic is most likely not going to happen. Right. I know there's been talks of the, I don't, I don't know how to censor it. I don't know if I can say well, it. Well, just say it and I can censor it. <laughs> like, if you need to. like the EBS. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, there's been talks of that constantly. Like, you know, there's just going to be like this in your face, like, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm just like, I just don't know if we're there yet. Right. Like, I don't know if that would be helpful yet. Yeah. Yeah. Because 
even if those things come out and people are not in the mindset of we won already, um, it's going to create a lot of fear and panic. And yeah. I don't think that that's a good energy to collectively have right now <laughs> because right. of this like whole like ascension and moving into a wor new world kind of thing. It's just that would not, that would be more harmful than good at this point. But I, I mean, I feel like something huge is coming. I just don't know what. <laughs> I don't yeah, know what I, it's going to look like. I agree with you wholeheartedly because even though these people who just can't accept that there's anything wrong, like their things are weird, you know, I do believe that God is on our side and God would yeah. never intentionally traumatize someone. Yeah, and exactly. I think yeah. that for a, a, a group of people, I think there are some people that are still following M MSM that kind of in the back of their head are suspecting yeah. that they're uh, weird friends might be right. <laughs> right. So, yeah. but yeah, I, I don't think they're going to want to traumatize people. And so I think that they're kind of showing us like a controlled demolition. They're making it so freaking yeah. obvious. Right. And I, I, I will go, I have a Twitter, but I, I just don't, I never post, but I'll kind of skim it sometimes. Mm -hmm. And to see some people like posting that they re now regret voting for the B for Mr. B, you mm -hmm. know, because, Oh God, like this is bad. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that people, and I know that the uh, military back channel, 16 plus one, you can't say the letter on YouTube, <laughs> but um, said, you know, sometimes you can't tell people the truth. You have to show them. Right. So I think we're I in mean, like, yeah. show phase right now. We're showing people. Right. That's truth. what Charlie says all the time. Cause I watch his videos all the time is that, you know, you can't shine the light in their eyes. You have to shine it on the ground so they can find themselves out of the yeah. cave, basically, <laughs> like, Absolutely. which is a perfect analogy. Um, absolutely absolutely and so you know that's what you know janine and tom before we were filming yesterday we spoke a little bit before we started filming and then i mentioned it on air you know a lot of people will get frustrated because we have to censor ourselves and in, in these videos or silence words and stuff and we say that we we're like some of the last people standing on this platform right and right before i started doing this i had never heard of these other platforms that like okay. where charlie is i don't know if i can say the names or you know so yeah. these normal people who might be questioning are going to go to YouTube. Right, exactly. And so for those of us still left, we can be the gateway to the people that are on the other platforms like Charlie, because then they'll find these people as well. Yeah. And so and so it's almost like this controlled war plan. Reroute. Re re <laughs> re <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, I mean, but I tell you, like, the stuff that we've experienced in this these last couple of years has been wild. Like, sometimes I yeah. sit back and think about it, like, where we were in 2019 to now, and it's like, yeah. oh, my God, do you think we're living in Revelation, the book of Revelation? Do you think this is what it is? Um, mm, uh, <laughs> I go back and forth about it. I don't think that it is bad. I, like, I don't think it's the end of the world. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't either. <laughs> like, no. I, I mean, I very much think that we're going into the years of Jubilee and all that yeah. kind of stuff. I think it's going to be a thousand years peace, that whole thing. Cause I just don't buy, I haven't looked into all the other books that were taken out of revelation or chapters or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Called. Um, but my spirit, whatever you want to call it, says, why, like, I've, ne I'm, I've never believed in the rapture. I've never but believed yes. in, um, I can't, well, I can't say never, but I haven't in a long time. Yeah. Um, it just always felt wrong. Like, yeah. it just felt like victim, yeah. victimhood. That's all it is. Um, because you know, crowns are given to those who overcome. Um, so I just don't feel like that's a God mindset. Um, and a I loving, think a loving God wouldn't do the physical. Yeah. I, I agree with you. Right. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't feel like I've listened. I've, I've read the book of revelations enough times to be like, yes, this is it. But I don't, from what people keep telling me, like, oh, we're in the end times, mark of the beast, blah, blah, blah. Like that kind of thing. I'm like, <laughs> I just, I just, I don't buy that like at all. It just doesn't feel kingdom to me. I feel like God has good for us coming. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think if you're, it's kind of like the whole timeline thing. 
if oh, you oh, create oh, that oh. reality, yeah. that's what's going to happen to you. <laughs> There's um, a book that was in the Dead Sea Scrolls called The War Scroll um, mm -hmm. that, of course, was taken out of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will say, no, that the war scrolls without a battle they were going to have in the, in the revolt that happened at that time. But a lot of people are like, no, 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 this was like the preamble to Revelation. And when okay. you read that first and then read Revelation, Revelation reads very differently. Yeah. Um, and basically, Revelation, in my opinion, at this point, is just a timeline shift. Yeah. It's just talking about a timeline shift. It's not the end of the world. The world's not going to go anywhere. We're just going to, and the rapture, if you will, yeah. is, our, is our consciousness understanding and waking yeah. up. That's yeah. what, it's not this physical traumatizing experience right. that the church likes to push on you. It's not these, the, the tribulation, in my opinion, is not about us. Mm -hmm. It's about them. Right. I, I came across that theory. I forgot who said that. It was someone on Nick's show. And I was like, I love that. It was yeah. like, the end times is not for us. It's for them. This is the yeah. end of their reign. I was right. like, yes, that's it. Yes. <laughs> it's exactly not what I've been feeling. I mean, we've gone through uncomfortableness these last couple of years, but for those of us who are awakened, it hasn't been as bad as it could have been because yeah. we know, we know what's going on. And yeah. um, Melissa Red Pill, the nation, she actually broke down Mr. Sure. T. I think that was her. I think I watched yeah. that one. Melissa. Yeah. 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 She broke down in one episode, Mr. T's family line and he okay. is from the line of judah which is one of the 12 tribes of israel which is yeah. part of like so he, his existence in this timeline is it was prophesized you right. prophesized it as well yeah. you know? yeah. and so um so it's all very like it, it's very interesting and it's very fascinating yes. and it makes you go holy crap nothing we've been taught about reality is real no yeah nothing nothing Absolutely. You know, <laughs> they, they want to tell us that we have 97% junk DNA. Yeah. <laughs> that don't make junk. Right. Exactly. That don't make junk. I mean, even going on to the whole DNA thing, like the bloodlines and whatnot, mm -hmm. uh, that was a lot of my spiritual awakening was dealing with the, uh, what I would call like the corruption in my DNA. Yep. Um, that kind of honestly removes the darkness out of it so that you can be with on the same fre frequency as the light i would say yeah. <laughs> like, knowledge is power <laughs> knowing yeah. is power i i stumbled that that was a step in my awakening as well because i'm rh negative and mm -hmm. i've had a lot of these experiences in my life that were really weird and and i won't go into too much detail i've, I've talked about it on my channel before but my great 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 grandfather was born into the english royal family and so okay. it was my boyfriend that was like i think you inherited their their special like bloodline yeah yeah and then it occurred to me i was like well they talk about bloodlines i i don't think they're just talking about family i think they're and so i started researching no, all these yeah. different blood types and yeah. my uh, my belief now is like for rh negatives we don't connect to the rhesus monkey so if 15 percent of the population doesn't connect to the rhesus monkey then that means none of us do because we're all right. human beings so right. where do all these different blood types come from yeah Tell me, and, and it's, so there's all this huge, huge part about our creation that, they, that mm -hmm. they're not telling us. Yeah. And that's, they want us to think that we're just these, this accident that happened, we're nothing, mm -hmm. when we are so much more powerful than that. Right. And I can't right. wait like for human beings, for each person to take their sovereignty back and take their right. autonomy back. And you're right. Once you understand stuff, you can kind of cleanse yourself and make your own decisions and, and see things you know, God gives you what he thinks you can handle for this life. And right. so, you know, it's, it's, it's all very exciting. And, and I, like your little boy, I'm, I'm so excited for little kids, especially little yeah. kids because they're, yeah. you know, I have these, I have my nephews, eight, my nieces will be seven Friday and I have a newborn niece and I'm like, wow, they are going to oh. walk into uh, such yeah. an incredible world. Yeah. They're going to not have to go through stuff we went through. Yeah, nope. that's why I keep on even like just like trying to like manifest this like my children will live in the years of jubilee. <laughs> they will not know debt or any kind of modern day slavery. <laughs> like just on and on and on that kind of thing. I know. <laughs> well, you talked I earlier mean, about the whole like kind of hamster wheel of life where and it yeah. does seem like it's got it, it's increased. Like mm -hmm. people just don't have time now to like sit down and they've made yeah. it to the point where you in order to afford your life have to constantly be on this like treadmill. And so right. you don't even have time to actually take in who you yeah. are. You and know, that's something that's also something like, I mean, 
if anything, especially last year, I mean, everybody was like 2020 vision. I was like, yeah, it was like opening everybody's eyes. And even for me, like on my journey, I just feel like so much of what, like I talked about earlier, I in, innately knew would was like explained last year and even this year, but just like things like I remember the first time, like, you know, I wanted, when I wanted to go to film school or whatever, um, I, uh, I was like so mad because I just didn't want to be in debt. I was like, I was like fighting it hardcore. I was like, I, I'm not going to be in debt. I can't go if I'm going to be in debt, you know, kind of thing. Just like debt. And why do I have to work like and waste my life? You know, that kind of thing. Like, just like all the things that are social norms these days, I've always questioned. <laughs> I feel like, Me too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just feel like a lot of that has been brought to light this year and last year. Um, and it's very much like I, I've always felt like I was meant for a special time. And I feel like this is it. Yeah. <laughs> this is a hundred percent it. Cause even, um, even how we like found Charlie was, uh, we, uh, my mom, uh, told me was given some currency, um, back in 2013, I think. And it was kind of like, you know, like it's an investment type of thing. It's a, you know, cause it's going to revalue at some point. And, you know, and I was just like, I feel like I need to hop on board. And I was like 18 at the time. And so I bought some too. <laughs> so I've just had it sitting around here and, you know, we kind of put it away for a while cause it was like not happening. And right. then last year, someone told us that we should look back into it. And that's ended up how we found Charlie and like how it was just like our steps were very much aligned <laughs> um, yeah. in how everything is now is just like everything that was meant to be in our path has come into our path from just following that. That you know, one nugget of that information. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I, I, that's how I found Charlie too. Cause we were my, my boyfriend who is 10 years older than me. So 20 years older than you. He had his great awakening. He was a military kid, lived everywhere. Um, and I have to say this carefully on YouTube. He had his awakening in the year 2001, in the month of September, on the 11th day. <laughs> That's all you have to say on YouTube. <laughs> so, because he was like, that wasn't, that wasn't inside. You know, he kind of knew innately that this was not yeah. what they were saying. And yeah. um, so he kind of helped me wake up a lot as well. But then... um. The one thing I what, what didn't really understand was the whole money thing. And then going down the rabbit hole, realizing that if one side of this coin changes with like the, with what we know they do with human beings, which is what all I'll say, y'all, everybody watching yeah. knows what I'm talking about, but we can't talk yeah. about it on, on YouTube. Um, then the money system also has to change because the two are intertwined together. Right. Completely yeah. intertwined together with the families that then run all of that. And so right. it all has to calm down. Nothing can yeah. stay. And I know my like parents freak out about like the possibility of like the stocks doing something crazy, but it's like, no, you don't understand. It's not going to be like the great depression, right? It's going to actually benefit humanity. And, right. and we're going to be in a position where what we're doing is our Dharma is our duty, not, not just to survive, but this is our work that God has given us to do is how right. I see the whole Nassara thing. Yeah. Happens. Yeah, exactly. There's so many people though. I just like, don't even know how to combat it anymore, which I pretty much just leave it. I just let them find it on their own. But so many people that are like, this is nothing to be excited about. This is the NWO. Um, you know, that's what it is. They're like, why are you excited about this? Is the mark of the beast is NWO. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, but it's not, it's not, it's not, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> don't we you were. realize they're taking all of that back? Yes. It's we like, take it and they're changing it. That system would have left us all like in destitute and we would have, yeah, this I mean, system. people are so traumatized from the system that we've been in that they're like, you know, the government doesn't do anything for free. They're going to want something in return and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, this is why only a small people amount of people know about the currency thing. I think it's because yeah. the, the people that know about it are the ones that are actually going to be helpful. Right. Of, right. You know, and it's, it's a, uh, you know, I, I was, I've been thinking a lot about how they were going to kind of show things and, you know, they can't start off with talking about this kind of stuff with people. Cause they would be like, what? And I, you know, when, um, doctor, I'll just say Dr. F. Yeah. When his, um, letters he was writing through a computer back and forth <laughs> were yeah. released. I was like, my hunch, and of course, because of like the news, they're not going to 
talk about it, but I was, I kind of had a hunch that that was going to be the first angle they were going to go down first yeah. to show that yeah. this was all malarkey. And right. then people will be like, but why would they do that? Why would they do that? And then that starts to get deeper into, right. well, this is why, and this is why, because of that. And this is why, because mm -hmm. of that. And then you get down right. to the nitty gritty of like what they're, that this is a religion. Yeah. Sorry guys watching. I know you guys know we have to really talk around stuff because <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this is the matrix but um, i mean if anything they'll be like what is that then <laughs> yeah, exactly. like looking out for themselves <laughs> right i know right um and, and that's the thing i don't know if you ever did you read archbishop vegano's letter that he wrote about a year ago to mr t mm -hmm. no it was a beautifully written letter and he um had to go like basically into hiding from it but he spoke about this oh, wow. that there was also a, a corruption in the church and he really sh pointed out that normal people, I know young Pharaoh kind of said this as well. Normal people make mistakes. They make mistakes. They do crappy things, but that doesn't mean they're bad people. It doesn't mean they're evil people. You can hug bad people back to good. Right. You can't. Yeah. But yeah. with the evil people, when you cross that line and you start participating in these rituals, there's no going back. And right. those are the people the church has done a good way of like making us scared that we're bad, but that right. is what's what they're talking about in the Bible. That is yeah. what they're speaking of. Not just right. an everyday person that just makes a mistake every now and again or you know, has right. a bad day and says something stupid, you know. So right. um, so I think that a lot of you know, and they talk about trauma bonding. I think a lot of people have mm -hmm. trauma bonded to the system. Yeah, for sure. Where, where they, yeah. they know they're in a, a bad an A B U S E relationship with the system but they're trauma bonded to it and so yeah. it's what they know yeah. so they don't want to leave what they know um right. and it's it's um you know i but i do think that what did you did you see um mr t on sean hannity i did, did yeah <laughs> yeah what yeah, did you think about nice. that uh i so i always i kind of get annoyed by watching him or watching anything that he talks about like his speeches or whatever he talks because i'm like just say it just say it <laughs> Gosh. Oh, because I'm, I'm so tired of the games, which everybody is, but I'm just like, I kind of, I'll watch it. <laughs> I'll watch it when I'm in a good state of mind because otherwise it just annoys me. But I mean, I think that he's talking in code for sure. Yeah. <laughs> To well, all of us that know. Tom always breaks it down. Tom always does the gematry and breaks down exactly yeah. what he said. Um, but I, I, that was the first time that I was like, kind of like, okay. Yeah. It's really about to get kicked off. Yeah. Because now he's yeah. really starting to make be forceful about this. For sure. Um, you know, they're, they're here in Georgia right now doing their, how can I say this? <laughs> their <laughs> special investigation. We'll just say right, that right. way into the competition that happened yeah. in November. Um, yeah. And they're here doing that now. They've done it out West and, um, yeah. you know, you, you can't, you, can, you know, if you want to trust the science, you also have to trust the math. Right, right. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't think I knew that they already started that one. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. yeah. I know it just because I'm here. I'm right in the heart of Fulton County, so like right okay. here where it all happened. In fact, all of my family is in Georgia, by the way. Oh, really? Literally all of them. Yeah. Well, Georgia's Georgia's great because outside of Atlanta, it's it's like Florida in that sense, yeah. where people are like whatever. Yeah, it's a, you know, back to life. But in Atlanta, it's like this kind of toxic little bubble. You know, right. and um, but it's funny because we were uh, our, when we get on our Wi-Fi here, there's somebody in this area that has T, Mr. T, 2024. And we don't know who it is. And we're like, where are you? Where are you? Where are you, friend? Where are you, ally? You know? know that I do these videos. I know. I'm like, oh, my gosh, because we're like in the middle. Of, we're like living on top of each other. So we have oh we get on our Wi-Fi. There's so many accounts. And um, yeah. so, yeah, but I know I get messages from people in Atlanta all the time that are like, thank you for, for having a voice in Atlanta. But um, I mean, and I went I went down to Tyler Perry studio and talked to an insider there. That oh, yeah. all this stuff is happening in Tyler Perry's studio. It's like all there. That's, yeah, I saw that. I saw that video that you did. I was like, well, it makes sense. Honestly, yeah. I kind of felt like Tyler Perry sold out a long time ago. Uh, but yeah. I mean, who knows, yeah. who knows if that's a, a good or a bad operation there. Yeah, um, the, the guy, well, when I was, we walked by and we walked by a fence and there was a guy doing the lawn and I just like peeped through the fence. And the guy came up and I was like, 
is there a White House here? And he was like, oh, yeah, it's over there. Like, and then I ended up getting an insider that actually confirmed everything and like told wow. me everything. I also have an insider with the Atlanta Police Department who have confirmed a lot that a lot of our uh, leaders here. Oh, that is so nice to have that, <laughs> that <Yeah>. insider. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, wait, you feel sane. <laughs> well, we, we got to get you a channel so you can get some Tennessee insiders. Oh Although gosh, yeah. he's pretty... Um, it's kind of like Florida in a sense where, yeah, no. Yeah. I actually, because of where I work and my boss is actually very much like on the same wavelength. We talk about this stuff all the time, but um, she, uh, she's like, I'm the mask thing, whatever, you know, the, the County that we are in or that I work in, I like live 30 miles from where I work, but um, the County over there is like, super like old school and just like yeah whatever like they're not super strict about anything so I kind of forget that that mm-hmm. happens because like the bulk of my time is spent over there and then I'm, like I go grocery shopping and I'm like oh it's it's over here <laughs> <laughs> still, it's still happening dang it <laughs> I mean I've, I've never been one to conform to that <laughs> but right. yeah um it's and I've never, it's, it, it's kind of amazing because I've never I I've always said if someone actually has the balls to tell me to put one on, I'll put one on, but no one does. So yeah. just walk around, <laughs> like, you know, do my business I, and leave in, in all spiritual texts, including the Bible, there is a huge emphasis on the breath on mm-hmm. God in the Bible. It's yeah. God breathed life into you. And so right. when a child is born, a child comes out of its mother. Yes. There are doctors in the room. Yes. The mother is pres- is present. But in that moment, when that child takes mm-hmm. that first breath, that is a sacred moment between yeah. God and that child. It is anointing. Yeah. God is anointing that child with divine life. Yeah. And so it makes sense that they want to. Right. Yeah. You know, to, to and cycle that. Even before, like, I mean, I told you I was listening to Charlie, you know, since he started pretty much. But even before that, I remember the first place that I went into after thing, uh, I was a restaurant after everything reopened. And I remember thinking, I was like, it literally looks like the sense I got was like, shut up and do your work. Like, you know, kind of thing. And I just felt so like, I just had this awful feeling coming over me. I was just like, I, I can't, I can't, su- I can't succumb to that. <laughs> no, it's so, it's totally gross. It's, you know, it gets to the point where you just have to, you have to have your channels. You have to say something. You have to join the fight. Hi, what do you have? <laughs> we, do for, for, we do it for him. We do it for him. And all that right. You know, so that he can live in harmony and in peace. And, um, you're so adorable. <laughs> I absolutely love the fact that his generation is called Generation Alpha. Oh, really? Is that the coolest thing ever? I'm like, yeah, that's yeah, right. You get it. <laughs> yeah, you get that Alpha. That's amazing. That's amazing. He's adorable. Well, I will I will let you go because I know you've got him. But I want you to come back on the channel if you want to yeah. do a roundtable with Tom. And I would love to get you to give, come and help me with some of these books of the Bible if you want to. Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> He's like pulling my finger. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. So I would love, I'll, I'll get back with you and let's do that. Like if you want to read them and then we can have a round table discussion about them and okay. both work yeah. together on this channel. I would love that because I love it. Having- yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So I'm going to put Elizabeth's links down below in the description box, but tell them as well, where can they find you on TikTok? Um, it's just Liz Olive with two E's. That's my username. Um, and then I'm also on telegram. Yes. I will put your telegram link down there as well. I'll tell you a funny story. I love, I love Charlie to death. I love Nicholas to death. I love them all to death. I had to silence my telegram. I did too. I have to, I had to mute Charlie's because I was like, this is too much, like in the middle of the night for us too. (laughs) And then I'll forget to check it. I'll totally just forget to check it. But yeah, because I just, I was like, in the middle of the night, it's like going off. But anyway, but I'll let you guys go and enjoy your afternoon. (laughs) All right. So I'll be in contact and I'll, I'll, we'll we'll do this again very, very soon. I'll, I'll contact Tom too. We can tell with Tom as well. Okay, perfect. Thank you. (laughs) Bye.